Hello YouTube world, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and here is the introduction to a new set of tutorials that I have just started which is on creating a adv an advanced chess engine and it will be it will be uh, coupled with a graphical interface which I won't be spending hardly any time at all uh, dealing with but it will it should be able to play uh, and implement much more advanced methods than my previous tutorial on chess engines. If you have never watched my first one, I would recommend watching it. It is a much simpler. It will give you a basics of how a chess engine works. This one is slightly more advanced, although I have simplified it as much as I can, um, so providing advanced methods, but doing them in a simple way. And hopefully we'll be able to understand them together. So. Uh, to start off with, I'd like to go over just a couple of the features and stuff about this engine to give you an idea of what we will be dealing with uh, in a very short uh, introduction. So the first thing is it will be able to play standard chess. It will be able to think up its own moves. It's not just a, one of those engines or, or so-called engines where it allows you to make moves and perhaps even restricts illegal moves, but it will actually be able to be able to think and play against you in a competitive and uh, thought-filled uh, way, not just making random uh, moves in response. It will also be able to play Chess 960. And if you're not familiar with that, just go ahead and Google it, but it's one of the uh, top chess variations. In fact, I could make this engine play multiple variations. This is the only one I'll show you how to implement, but super, super simple to implement new methods as long as it's a basic 8x8 board with the basic pieces just different starting and stuff, no problem. And it will go through all 960 uh, variations with equal chance of hitting any one of the 960 variations of this method. Uh, another thing I will be able to do is force a move. So for instance, if it's thinking of a move and it's um, just trying to process what move to make and it's taking a while, you can just hit stop or whatever the button is going to be and it will be able to just quit its thinking operation and make the best move that it's come up with so far. And so that will really help you if you're feeling you have a time crunch or something. And not only that, it will have timing. So I will be able to say limit the time to three minutes. So the total time for all the moves that the computer makes during this game will be stuck to three minutes. So it will be forced to make a move every few seconds. And if it's in a time crunch, it'll have to make moves really fast. If it's in a difficult spot, hopefully it'll take longer and it'll be able to gauge itself roughly. It, these are all things that you feel free to imp uh, improve upon and adjust exactly what you think is best. But I'll show you a basic way of getting started on all these things. Another thing it'll be able to do is show its thoughts while it's thinking. So let's say you gave it two minutes to think of a move and it will show you using arrows, it'll show you an arrow from, you, let's say, a pawn straight forward two moves or whatever. It'll show you a transparent arrow pointing in the direction of what it's currently thinking is the best move. And if you hit stop uh, and force a move, then it will uh, make that move that that arrow showed. Another thing is it'll be fast. It'll be faster than my simple uh, chess engine, even though it's more advanced and will have way more code, uh, or some more code anyway, it will be quite a bit quicker at what it does do. Now we will be bogging it down a little bit with doing more in the same amount of time, so we will teach it more stuff and which will slow it down a little bit, but overall it will be much faster uh, than the simple engine at thinking of stuff. And another thing is it is simple. Uh, this is an advanced tutorial and don't expect something quite as simple as my previous tutorials. However, I have taken a certain advanced topic, let's say bit boards or whatever it is, and really worked on how can I write this code as simple as possible. Perhaps it's not 100% efficient when you do it simple. Perhaps it could have been tweaked better but it is simple and it's understandable. And that is really my goal, not to make the next Houdini, but to make something that can be a platform for others like yourself 
to build upon and make your engine. So here's a few things we will be uh, implementing and I'll be teaching you on. One of them is bit boards and that's basically the way that your board is arranged. It's arranged since the board has uh, 64 squares, uh, an 8 by 8 board has 64 squares and your computer is 64 bits. Um, some are 32 I realize but a lot are turning to 64 and it will be very efficient on 64-bit hardware. And it's just even if you're on a 32-bit hardware, it's way faster than defining a board based on an array, especially in Java. Another thing we can do here is we will be discussing and implementing iterative deepening, which is uh, a way of um, being able to do a forced move or knowing what already is the best move that it's so far thought of, and it speeds up our whole search tree process. Also, we'll be focusing on multi-threading a little bit. So we'll be doing multiple things at once, trying to uh, provide some ways to make things efficient and fluent and easy. Uh, it'll just appeal graphically and so on. And uh, by no means will it be uh, too complicated in the multi-threading. I'm just keeping it very basic, but am implementing a little bit there. Uh, alpha beta pruning, this is very much what my previous uh, chess engine, uh, it's the only thing of these lists that my previous engine really used and it's a way of making, instead of having to search a million thoughts, it can systematically and, and smartly eliminate a lot of those thought processes. So we will be again using another version of alpha beta pruning. We'll also be using transposition tables which uh, is basically hash maps. Uh, it'll be in the form of hash maps, but that way if it sees a move or a board position that was similar to a previous one that's already seen before, it'll just recall all the information about it. So for instance, for a certain board position, you know, where pawns and pieces are in different places, that could occur by moving, by doing it multiple ways. Perhaps white had started, but the same board position could be achieved by black starting or something, but it will remember, hey, I've seen this position, although I came, I thought about it from a different, uh, I got here a different way, but since I've seen this board before and I've already analyzed it, no point analyzing it again, I'll just remember whatever I'd thought about that position in the past. So that helps speed things up, especially with um, um, iterative deepening. And now another thing we'll be focusing is aspiration windows. These are just a, it's a real very simple concept. I won't get into it now, but it helps speed up the thinking process, but it allows the engine to actually make mistakes. Um, it is possible to make mistakes anyway. And so we will have a mistake catcher, which will say, hey, you thought about this a little too quickly. You glossed over a few important details. Um, I think you need to go through it slower. And so aspirations or windows are a way of doing that. Kind of like a person, we sometimes look at a board without noticing a certain thing. We're just looking at it too quickly and all of a sudden we see that thing and then we have to refactor that information in to our search analysis. So that's sort of what aspiration windows are all about. Another thing we'll be working on is principal variation search, which is uh, tied in again to aspiration windows. We'll get into that this time. Also an advanced theoretical evaluation on my uh, previous chess engine tutorials uh, for creating an alpha beta chess engine. Uh, I had a, a, an evaluation function that we went through, a few methods, but they weren't theoretically sound. You know, it, it spent a lot of attention on, for instance, your last move because it said, you know, uh, often activity is happening around where the opponent made their last move. And that's a generality, but that's not something very theoretically sound or uh, what most professional engines do. And so there's a reason for that. And so we will be doing something more um, appropriate where we'll focus on doubled pawns and, uh, and proper uh, things, rook placements and different things that are theoretically sound ideas for evaluating a position. 
and there's just so much more. There's lots and lots of other things we'll be focusing on, and this tutorial will be, there'll be quite a few of them, but uh, it should give you a real good idea for uh, uh, creating an engine. And uh, these methods, although I'll be focusing on Java, uh, you should be able to, if you can understand how it works in Java, it's a fairly simple language to comprehend uh, what I'm writing and make sense of it. You should be able to apply that to things like C, uh, C++, and uh, other uh, languages that you are interested in. Uh, very simple, basic engines or la scripting languages might not be able to do some of the stuff we do, but uh, most engines out there should have no problem, uh, Python and all sorts of other stuff. And so, as always, so stay tuned. Uh, keep coming back for those next tutorials. I'll be posting up uh, pretty much every week, hopefully. And uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe. And then you will automatically get updates on the next uh, video that I post when I post it. All right. Until next time, enjoy Java.